Rolling silently beneath our bustling lives, tires form an integral part of the automotive world, a market valued at over $100 billion globally. Yet, in the midst of our daily commutes and journeys, how often do we pause to ponder the unsung heroes supporting our vehicles, cars, trucks, buses? They all rely on tires, and more often than not, those tires trace their origins back to a rivalry that has spanned well over a century between industry giants, Goodyear and Firestone. This isn't just a tale of rubber meeting the road, it's a story of legal battles, attempted monopolies, and a resilience that has shaped the automotive landscape. Join us as we unravel the fascinating history and evolution of these tire titans, exploring six distinct categories that converge to narrate the story of this enduring rivalry. Explore untold stories of iconic brands and personalities at the Bullish Society. Uncover forgotten archives, secrets, and narratives that shape our world. Meet visionaries, voices of change, and immerse yourself in defining stories. Subscribe now and join our community of storytellers. Don't miss the tales behind every success and failure. In the heart of Akron, Ohio, two tire titans emerged at the turn of the century, shaping the rubber industry for generations to come. B.F. Goodrich, named after Benjamin Franklin Goodrich, set the stage with his rubber company, pioneering the rubber trend in the 1890s with bicycle tires. As bicycles gained popularity, the demand for tires surged, igniting the potential for the emerging automotive industry. Meanwhile, Charles Goodyear's legacy loomed large. Though he discovered vulcanized rubber, his struggles to protect the patent left him in a perpetual debt, a footnote in the annals of rubber history. Yet, Frank Sieberling seized the opportunity, founding Goodyear with a modest loan in an abandoned factory. Their partnership with Henry Ford in 1908 marked a pivotal moment, as Goodyear's tires adorned the iconic Model T, propelling them to the forefront of the tire market by 1916. Harvey Firestone's journey mirrored Sieberling's ambition. With $10,000 and a vision, he established his rubber company in Akron, capturing Ford's attention with a groundbreaking order of 2,000 tire sets in 1906. This marked Firestone's ascent, laying the groundwork for a tire dynasty poised to rival Goodyear's dominance. Diving into the realm of innovation, both Firestone and Goodyear stand as pioneer in the tire industry, shaping the very landscape we navigate today. These companies arguably among among the most innovative in the tire world, have continuously propelled the industry forward with groundbreaking ideas. For Firestone, the journey of innovation began in 1908 with the introduction of the first tires featuring a diagonal non-skid tread design, a stroke of ingenuity reportedly sketched by Harvey Firestone himself, laid the foundation for safer and more reliable tires. In 1922, they proudly claimed the industry's first low-press balloon tire, promising extended tread life and tire longevity. The constraints of World War II prompted Firestone to adapt, creating tires from synthetic rubber when natural rubber was scarce. Goodyear's innovation timeline unfolds in 1904 when they engineered a tire detachable from the rim, marking a pivotal moment in tire design. The Lifeguard tire, introduced in 1934, showcased a groundbreaking ability to maintain stability even after a blowout. Venturing beyond Earth, Goodyear left an indelible mark on lunar terrain in 1971 by crafting the first tires to traverse the moon with Apollo 14. In 1991, they unveiled Aquatred, the inaugural mass market tire meticulously designed for optimal performance in wet conditions. The collective contributions of both brands underscored their commitment to advancing tire technology through the decades. In the 1930s, during the throes of the Great Depression, Firestone faced adversity with five consecutive years of declining sales. A strategic pivot came in the form of an innovative marketing approach. Targeting farmers with a specially designed low-pressure tire for tractors, the rallying cry to put the farm on rubber resonated resulting in a significant turnaround for the company. Additionally, Firestone's marketing prowess manifested in the creation of The Voice of Firestone. During the same era, a musically resonant radio program that not only entertained but also reinforced the brand's presence. These unconventional marketing strategies exemplify the company's ability to adapt, connect with diverse audiences, and thrive in challenging times. Goodyear, on the other hand, found its identity in the iconic wing foot symbol, a tribute to the Roman god Mercury, conceived by founder Frank Sibley in 1900. This symbol adorning their logo has served as a steadfast 
identifier since they are sent to the position of the largest tire company in 1916. The impactful slogan, More People Ride on Goodyear Tires Than Any Other Kind, resonated during this era of dominance. Yet, it was the Goodyear blimp that emerged as a unique marketing marvel, originating in 1910 with an aeronautics department for airplane coatings. The blimps became airborne billboards, illuminating sporting events, including the inaugural Super Bowl in 1967, and etching Goodyear into the public memory. Amidst their triumphs, both giants encountered challenges, offering a glimpse into the tumultuous journey of century-old industry leaders. In 1936, Goodyear faced scrutiny when a tire contract with Sears raised concerns of unfair competition, prompting voluntary termination and an amendment to the Clayton Antitrust Act. The 1976 United Rubber Workers Union strike, involving 70,000 members, marked a significant labor struggle for both Goodyear and Firestone, concluding with a substantial increase in wages and benefits over three years. The early 2000s witnessed Goodyear grappling with an SEC investigation into accounting irregularities, leading to significant restatements of earnings and a dent in their financial image. On the Firestone front, the recall specter loomed large. In 1978, a safety issue triggered a massive tire replacement effort, resulting in a $500,000 fine and a blow to reputation. The year 2000 brought a graver challenge, with faulty Firestone tires linked to over 200 deaths. The repercussions included a damaged reputation, the closure of a production plant in Illinois, and strained relations with Ford, disrupting a long-standing partnership. In the thrilling world of racing, the rivalry between Firestone and Goodyear has been a spectacle, marked by victories, records, and even a bit of silver screen drama. Firestone made a thunderous entry, earning a claim through the Indy 500. They triumphed in the inaugural 1911 race, a feat followed by over 60 victories. More than all other tire manufacturers combined, however, Goodyear took the lead in diverse racing domains. Despite Firestone initiating ties with NASCAR in the 1940s, Goodyear asserted dominance from the 1950s onwards, claiming the title of the exclusive tire supplier for NASCAR since 1997. The Goodyear 400 in South Carolina stands as a testament to their racing prowess. In the world of Formula One, Goodyear soared, securing more victories than any other tire brand. The land speed record duel of 1965 showcased the speed prowess of both giants, with Goodyear's tires pushing a vehicle beyond 600 miles per hour, surpassing Firestone's earlier record. Even the iconic 1966 24 hours of Le Mans, where Ford faced Ferrari, Goodyear tires outperformed Firestone in rainy conditions, prompting a switch by multiple racers. As the 1980s dawned, the tire industry witnessed a maelstrom of challenges, compelling companies to navigate turbulent waters. Goodyear, foreseeing the changing winds, had invested early in radial tires, a design that gained momentum in the 1970s. The TMO Radial, certified as the first year-round radial snow tire, became Goodyear's flagship product. In a strategic move, Goodyear sought diversification, aiming to reduce their reliance on tire sales. However, the path to diversification proved arduous. Amidst this landscape, attentive takeovers and consolidations were rife. In 1986, James Goldsmith's bid to take over Goodyear prompted the sale of their gas and aerospace ventures. Simultaneously, the Akron-based General Tire thwarted a hostile takeover, strategically repurchasing $1.6 billion of its own stock and later selling to Continental. In 1988, Firestone, facing a potential takeover, opted for acquisition by the Japanese tire giant Bridgestone for $2.6 billion. The following year saw the French company Michelin acquiring Goodrich, forming the largest tire company globally. This complex web of consolidations marked the end of Goodyear's seven-decade reign as the number one tire maker, as competitors combined forces to compete fiercely at their level. Though Goodyear remains a formidable force, the tire industry underwent a transformative shift that continues to echo through the years. Thanks for joining us on this captivating journey through the stories that shape our world. Your support keeps the Bullet Society thriving. Subscribe and ring the notification bell to never miss a captivating story. More incredible stories and interviews are coming your way. Stay tuned for what's next on The Bullish Society.